Good morning from Tennant Creek. Now I was going to start today's vlog with a really beautiful drone sequence like overflying the town, the sun's just coming up at the moment but apparently even in the south side of town this is in the no-fly zone. So like a good pilot I'm respecting the drone rules and not flying the drone this morning. So instead please enjoy this ground-based sequence of Tennant Creek as we make our way to the airport. Twenty seven degrees already, quarter past six in the morning. Oh, something's leaking in my bag. Eh, it's a good thing about forty degree days. That'll dry. Yeah. Out. Oh, you're coming to Darwin, Bimby. All right. Too late. feeling knowing that you are completely on your own out here. I quite like that fact to be honest that kind of suits my personality but equally knowing that if something does happen you are completely on your own out here. One thing to mention is the the subject of fear when it comes to flying and I've made a video on this in the past before but now is a good time I think to talk about it. To any of you that fly either like privately or even as passengers on commercial aircraft as well you know, there are times when things can get a little bit scary. You could be in, you know, turbulent conditions. You could be flying on your own and, you know, you, you, you might feel like you're getting lost or you don't know what you should be doing, so you're doubting yourself. You end up being in an aircraft feeling scared. That is understandable and you're not alone with that. Everybody gets that and anyone who says they don't is a complete liar. Never fly with anyone who says they're not scared or they haven't been scared in a plane at some point in their career. But fear... I feel is expecting to be scared. In a leg like this, for example, when, you know, there's, there's nothing around us, if something goes wrong, I'm gonna have to get the plane on the ground and I'm gonna be on my own for a while. You know, it's gonna take a while for someone to come to me. I might not even survive getting the plane on the ground. You know, something could happen catastrophically on the way down. But that fear, that expectation of being scared, you need an element of it as a pilot because you wanna stay on your game. You wanna try and prevent bad things happening but you don't want to fear bad things happening. And that fear can sometimes really hold us back. So if ever you're thinking of getting on a commercial flight but you're scared about it, if ever you're doing your flight training and you're feeling scared about it, whatever the situation, if you're feeling anxious about being on a plane, just remember fear doesn't exist. Fear is just completely in your head. Fear is you expecting to be scared. And I found with my flying, the moment I understood that, I stopped worrying about what could happen and started focusing more on how can I prevent bad things from happening. And that comes down to monitoring my engine frequently. I'm doing a proper fuel plan whenever I'm flying so I don't run out of fuel. 
having a plan B. You know, I have a plan B all the time. I'm always looking at my nearest airport. I'm always thinking, if something happens now, where do I go? And that's not me being scared about it. That's me being prepared so I don't have that feeling of fear. Life is freaking short, guys. If we live in fear all the time, you don't want to... You don't want to die at 25 and then be buried at 75. There is nothing to fear but fear itself. What do you fear, milkshake? I fear running out of snacks. Oh, we're not going to run out of snacks, don't worry about that. It's not far to go until we get to Catherine now. And we, we, we're nearing on Darwin, we're getting there at the end of this Wrigley Murphy recreation. I was just reading again the notes from Tom's book that he gave me, which, yes, I did spill. 11th of December, which was only, it's 100 years ago, in four days' time. 11th of December, Newcastle waters to Catherine, which is the leg we're on. The last stop at Catherine was the most frustrating. They had no option but to land as they were almost out of fuel and oil. The landing ground was surrounded by high trees as they circled the small field. The working party on the ground laid out a T sign to denote the direction of the wind. They put the T the wrong way around and on our first attempt when we were coming in on downwind, someone lit a fire and got some smoke going. It was an impossible situation and I would say that having undergone a course in special flying at Gosport in England in 1918, we were able to put Gosport procedure into practice and get into the landing ground. We finished up with a prop in between the trees. We got down all right, but the question was how to get off again. We then spent the next two days chopping down trees, re-preparing the runway, trying to get them out again, and how they got out of Catherine to Darwin. So this delay meant that they weren't, they're not going to be the first aircraft to arrive in Darwin. The Vickers Vimy, which was flying from the UK to Australia, had already landed two days ago. But they said, with barely a foot or two between the wingtips of the trees, the BE roared down the makeshift runway and took off with about three feet clearance above the bush that still stood at the end of the lane. The right for Darwin is slowly... That's the uh, ATIS, the Aerodrome Information Service for Darwin, which is slowly coming in. I've left the frequency on in the background, so the closer we get to the signal... Getting a lot stronger now. Okay, that's a good sign. That means we're nearly at Darwin. All right, strap in, milkshake. Echo Yankee Zulu, still is frequency. Echo Yankee Zulu, AFM. I don't request best speed to, to the field due sequence. Best speed to the field, Echo Yankee Zulu. Sure. It's not often I'm told I'm too slow. <laughs> speed up. Echo Yankee Zulu, runway 36, clear to land. Clear to land, runway 36, Echo Yankee Zulu. Okay, big shout out to George. Thank you very much. He works in airport operations here at Darwin. Just gave me a ride to the terminal from the plane, which would have been a hot walk. Look how much I'm sweating. It's disgusting. But finally here in Darwin. Yeah. I've already got my bags. So 23 days after they set off from Point Cook, where we started our journey to, after 4,200 kilometers of flying, at 10.30 in the morning on the 12th of December, 1919, this is where Wrigley and Murphy landed. Wrigley and Murphy rolled their BE-2E here on the landing site and parked it up alongside the Smith Brothers Vickers Vimy. So if you look this up on the map, this is actually 23 Giles Street. It's a plot of land on a residential street. Every other plot of land has been built on, but the local council have kept this as is, as a memorial and as a, as a testament to the amazing feat that both Wrigley and Murphy and of course the Smith brothers, who landed here two days before Wrigley and Murphy after they completed their flight from the UK all the way to Australia in under 30 days, to in effect win the great air race. I've been reading this site and the nice thing is of course it covers the Smith Brothers and their amazing achievement flying from the UK all the way to here in Australia but there's also a section on here about Wrigley and Murphy and in typical Darwin style just as I start recording this down here it's starting to rain.
Just because we're in Darwin now as well doesn't mean that these vlogs are going to end. We've obviously done the Wrigley Murphy part, part flying from Point Cook up to Darwin, but I've now got a couple of days in Darwin. I'm also going to be hanging at the airport. Then Michael arrives from his epic trip from the UK to Australia, so we're going to hang with him. And there's also a very special commemorative flight that we're going to be doing over Darwin. And then of course there's the trip home. So do stick around for those and thank you for watching the vlog so far. Now if you're not subscribed to the channel already then do click on that subscribe button. It means a lot to me to see the channel grow. It helps me do more projects like this. Give us a like if you enjoyed this video. Otherwise... La -la -la.